Hello, hi, a very, very happy good evening. So this is Krishna Veni and we're talking about the story of life on Earth and that's biology. Yes, welcome to my session today. So today we're going to revise the concepts of the chapter transport and plants. So there are certain uh, terms which is very confusing to students and how it applies in question. So today I will explain the logic behind each of them and we will also solve 15 questions so that it makes your concept very strong. Okay, so that is the agenda of today's lecture. So as such, I am done with this chapter. So I am done even solving questions. But when I give a mentee, yes, but when I have questions or when I give a mentee, you people are struggling a lot because you do not know how to apply the concepts instantly. So here I have got pictures, simplified equations so that you remember what happens in each condition. Yes, a very, very happy good evening, Darni. Thank you so much for joining my session. So please do like, share and subscribe. Okay, so this is today's agenda. So this is what we're going to discuss in today's lecture. But before we discuss this, that is transport in plants conceptually, um, let me give you another announcement. Is today, I hope all of you remember, at 6.30 p.m. we are having Menti quiz. So Menti quiz at 6.30 p.m. So guess the chapter Menti. Okay, Menti, which chapter? Any clue? Okay, so I still have no clue because I myself haven't thought about it. So after class only. So it depends on what chapter I want to pick. So as of now, there is no clue there any. Yes, hello Prince. I hope you are doing good. Wishing you a very, very happy good evening. Thank you so much for joining my class. Hi Keshav. Hi, hello. After a very long time, you are here. So today it's weekend, so you are here. Is that so? Huh? I hope you are doing good. Anyways, thank you so much guys for joining my session. So please do like, share and subscribe. Okay, so please don't miss my mentee. So the mentee is at 6.30 p.m. Okay. <coughs> Concept section in human physiology. So this is about transport in plants. So do you need a, conception, a concept session in human physiology as well? Yes, is that what you're saying? Yes, I'm fine because as long as you don't understand the concept, then there is no point of revising. So yes, your suggestion is taken. But let me know if it's plant physiology or animal physiology. Yes, and in anim uh, if it's uh, sorry, if it's human physiology, so which chapter do you want me to revise? Which chapter do you want me to teach conceptually? Please let me know. So accordingly, I can come up with a session so that I can teach you once again the concept properly. Okay? Yes? Okay, so transport in plants. So this is the chapter, okay. Plant physiology only, you want me to revise the concepts? Okay, I will do. So is there anyone out here who wants me to do concepts for human physiology as well? But human physiology as such, we have no problems except for rarely one or two. So we have to find the cardiac input, the stroke volume, only that much is there. Okay, so plant physiology, yes, I will uh, revise. Yes, Anthony, I'll be wishing you a very, very happy good evening. So thank you for joining my session. So please do like, share and subscribe. Neutral potential concept. Okay, so that is your neural concepts. Okay, fine. Or all, uh, all, all right, anything else? Uh, for human physiology, only NCRT. So in certain cases, I would have discussed other chapters as well. So please go forward and watch my lecture. So if you find everything similar, maximum one or two slides extra away from NCRT. So please go through them, Darni. That's all. Yes, uh, okay. So digestion and absorption for you. Okay, Anthony, I will do. Yes, Vishal. Hello, hi. A very, very happy good evening. So thank you for joining my lecture. So please do like, share and subscribe. All right. So transport in plants. So plant physiology is what we have been talking about. So this has five chapters. So we are done with all the five chapters. So here we are in transport in plants, which has a weightage of 1%. But the concepts are pretty, pretty tricky. So why and where do you go wrong? Yes, Shimpi, hello, hi, a very, very happy good evening. I'm good, thank you. How are you? So please do like, share and subscribe. All right. So moving into this transport in plants. So what are the topics we read in transport in plants? If you're able to quickly recollect, so these are the topics. We spoke about the means of transport. The means of transport include active and passive. 
and then plant water relationship so this is our weakest area right so this is not only weakest for you but for all the students who do it for the first time or for all the students who try to understand but still it's confusing so sometimes like i am not as strong as i am in genetics with plant physiology yes but it takes 2 seconds for me to realize okay so this is how it is it does not come so instantly even if it comes yes you tend to go wrong there is nothing wrong in this so we are being practical so you are applying all the principles so that it goes right okay so please don't panic so let me see if this session helps you understand the logic behind this concept so long distance transport of water then we spoke what is transpiration uptake and transport of mineral nutrients what is flow and transport etc right so what is this concept that i want to teach you so i want to give you a quick recap of what is water potential what is this term solute potential what is pressure potential then what is diffusion pressure what is dpd what is osmotic pressure so your confusion revolves around these six terms right so nothing else in this topic is confusing so the confusing terms in your chapter are only these six terms so what happens to these six terms so let's define each of them separately and then we will link everything together okay so what is water potential so water potential is denoted by this symbol right so water molecules have a lot of kinetic energy in them right so this ability of water molecule to possess high kinetic energy is known as water potential okay so water potential of pure water is maximum water potential of pure water is maximum so that is psi w is equal to 0 so this is the maximum value so thus for a solution your water pressure would be sorry your water potential would be negative your water potential can never be greater than 0 so this is the first point that you should remember okay so the term potential or pressure itself is confusing okay so potential is the ability to do something the ability to move from one point to the other so that is potential all right yes okay so this is about your water potential then what is solute potential so in nature we do not have pure water as such so everywhere we have a solution so your cell your normal cell has water content but yes it also has solute molecules dissolved you do not have pure water inside your cell so if you talk of your vacuum so your vacuum consists of your sap so this sap does not consist of pure water but instead it consists of a solution so solution is something which has a solute plus solvent okay for example if i say i have a sugar solution which means my solute here is sugar molecule and my solvent here is water so my sugar makes my sugar molecules get dissolved in water completely so that is my solution so what is solute potential so the ability of the solute molecules to dissolve in a solvent is known as your solute potential so solute potential is denoted as this so this is your solute potential and remember solute potential is always negative at any cost it is negative so water potential can never be greater than 0 and your solute potential can never be positive it is always a negative value yes clear okay so now what is this term pressure potential okay suppose i am having a cell okay so at a temperature greater than the atmospheric pressure so now if you ask me what is the pressure it is the normal atmospheric pressure that i am breathing in and out and you are also breathing normally yes there is no problem so if i have a pressure which is greater than the atmospheric pressure at such 
such condition if water enters inside a cell yes so there exists pressure on the walls of the cell okay so this pressure is known as pressure potential this pressure that exerts on the wall is known as pressure potential and it is denoted as this so since this pressure is exerted on the wall so this is also known as wall pressure or it is also known as serga pressure there is no separate difference between them okay yes water potential can be negative because for pure water water potential is zero thus for a solution water potential can be negative so for a solution water potential is negative shimpi okay yes no for a solution it is negative keshav okay yes so this is your pressure potential wall pressure or turgor pressure so don't confuse between them so these three are synonymous terms okay so that is your pressure potential so moving further so let me explain okay so now let me explain what is diffusion pressure so first three terms are clear yes yes so first we read about water potential the maximum value of water potential itself is zero and it can go in negative ranges so your solute potential is always negative more the solute more is the negative value okay yes yes questions are there vishal of course questions are mandatory in today's session so then pressure potential is always positive okay that to sum it up water potential is equal to solute potential plus pressure potential so this is the ideal equation so this pressure potential is also known as wall pressure or turgor pressure so this much is clear yes so this is the first equation that we will remember what is diffusion pressure so diffusion pressure is defined as the ability of the solvent to diffuse from higher concentration to lower concentration so this is known as diffusion pressure the ability of solvent to diffuse from higher concentration to lower concentration is known as diffusion pressure all right so understand if i have a compartment like this so here solvent represents my water molecule right no doubt so if i have a compartment like this here i have only water meaning this has only solvent here i have a solution so here i have sugar plus solvent that is water so now how will water move so water will move from this place to this place so this is the higher concentration of water so water has this diffusing ability to move from higher concentration to lower concentration so that is my diffusion pressure so di diffusion pressure is represented as dp here yes so solute molecules do not have diffusing potential only water molecules has this diffusion pressure so depending on diffusion pressure if you want to understand how water molecule moves it moves from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration okay clear fine now the next most confusing term is what is dpd so that is your diffusion pressure deficit so what is this so this dpd is also known as suction pressure so dpd was initially known as suction pressure okay so now here i have a pure solvent 
and here I have a solution. So in the solution I have water that is my solvent plus my solute. Here I have only my pure water. So the diffusion pressure of my pure water the diffusion pressure this one of my pure water is different and the diffusion pressure of water when it is mixed with a solute is different right so the difference in the diffusion pressure of water in its pure state and water in its solution form is known as dpd so that is diffusion pressure deficient all right yes Yes, you are right. So, DPD and DP are inversely proportional. Yes, you are absolutely right. So, in case of diffusion pressure, water moves from higher concentration to lower concentration. In case of DPD, water moves from lower DPD to higher DPD. So, here water moves from lower DPD to higher DPD. Okay, yes, uh, yes ma'am, a very very happy good evening. So, thank you so much for joining my lecture. So, please do like, share and subscribe. So, diffusion pressure, diffusion. So, it is also known as suction pressure. Alright, okay. Suppose if I have a solvent that is only pure water and on the other side if I have a solution. So, that is water mixed with my solute molecule. Now, the diffusion pressure of pure water is different. And the diffusion pressure of water in the solution is different, right? Of course. So, here I told you what is diffusion pressure. So, diffusion pressure of water in its pure state is different and diffusion pressure of water in solution is different. So, this difference in the diffusion pressure is known as DPD, diffusion pressure deficient. So, here lower DPD, so water moves from lower DPD to higher DPD. Yes, now Vishal you understood? Uh, yes, Adil, hello and welcome to my session. So, please do like, share and subscribe. This is clear to everyone. So, you understood what is DPD? Yes? Okay. So, now you have another concept before going here. So, that is known as your osmotic pressure. So, I have explained what is diffusion pressure, what is DPD or suction pressure. Now, we have to understand what is osmotic pressure. So, pay attention as to what is osmotic pressure. So, suppose I have sol solvent. So, this is pure water. Okay. So, now here I have a solution. Okay. So, here I have my water plus my sugar molecules. So, sugar is my solute. Water is my solvent. Okay. So, let me draw it like this. So, imagine this is a tube. Okay. So, here I have only water. Here I have only my solution. Since you have higher concentration of water here, so the, it is the natural ability of the water or the diffusion pressure of water to move from higher concentration to lower concentration. So water will move from here to here, right? So if it moves from here to here, what will happen? It will become like this, right? So, water from this compartment is moving here. So, it will become like this. So, this part is your osmotic pressure. This part, so water, so both are at equal levels here. So, water here is here, solution is here. A solution contains a solvent plus a solute. That is sugar plus water, okay? So, it is the natural ability of water to move from high concentration to lower concentration. So, water moves from here to this side. Alright. So, when it moves like this, so this is how the levels look. So, this portion is known as your osmotic pressure. 
so what am i trying to say so osmotic pressure uh, sorry osmotic pressure or potential is a pressure within the solution okay that is created by the solute molecules to stop the flow of water into the solution so listen once again osmotic pressure or potential is created within a solution by the solute molecules to restrict or stop the flow of water from high concentration to low concentration why because if more water molecules moves in here it becomes more diluted right so then there is no particular value for the solute so the solute molecules resist the flow of water into its solution so that is known as osmotic potential clear yes is this clear everyone understood what is osmotic pressure is there anyone who wants me to explain once again yes is this clear no doubt okay fine so now i have certain conditions which we will understand so these are some of the basic terms now following some certain conditions so what happens to a cell if it it is placed in a salt water so if it is placed in a salt water yes so if i have salt water in a beaker and if i place my cell so salt water means it has more ions it has more of solute particles than of water so it has less water so compared to this water our cell has more of water and less of ions thus by the diffusion pressure of water water moves outside the cell so thus the cell shrinks okay so salt water is a hypertonic condition so hypertonic tonic is ion remember like this hyper is increased ionic concentration so you have more ionic concentration outside the cell that is why water moves out outside the cell so this is hypertonic condition okay so here the cell shrinks here the cell shrinks okay yes so don't confuse with this hold on this i will explain once again okay yes fine now what is isotonic so iso is same right so you have same concentration of ions and you have same concentration of water okay yes so you are placing it in a tap water so tap water has isotonic concentration so since the concentration of water and ions is same there is no net movement of water so this is your tap water okay yes fine then what is hypotonic so hypo is less so you have less of ions and you have more of water thus water moves into your cell so this is in case of distilled water this is in case of salt water tap water distilled water you have less of ions yes so you get distilled water in your petrol pumps which you can use for your ups system if you have so this has less ions so water moves inside so as a result your cell swells so when water moves inside there is sudden pressure created on the walls yes so suddenly if you pump air into the balloon the walls of the balloon blows up right so in that case your turgor pressure increases your turgor pressure increases in case of hypotonic cell whereas your turgor pressure decreases in case of hypertonic cell a hypertonic cell is your plasmolyzed cell so shimpi says repeat again okay so hypertonic so you have more of ions less of water and your cell is placed in your hypertonic condition so hypertonic means more ions less water okay so there is more water inside the cell so by the law of diffusion pressure water moves outside the cell 
okay so thereby the cell shrinks now the cell is called as plasmolyzed cell so what is a hypertonic solution one example can be a salt water so since the uh, cell shrinks the turgor pressure the pressure on the walls is negative so turgor pressure wall pressure pressure potential is always positive but if i say negative so here you consider turgor pressure to be zero okay so turgor pressure is nil it goes way below than that so we do not consider so isotonic is your placing a cell in a medium that has the same amount of ions and that has the same amount of water so there is no net movement of molecules or water so isotonic solution is your tap water so here everything remains the same tap uh, your uh, turgor pressure your osmotic pressure etc okay yes yes here you have more water inside the cell you have more water okay no flaccid and turgid are different so this is turgid so this is your flaccid cell so this is your plasmolyzed cell this is your flaccid cell and this is hypotonic so hypertonic is less ions and more water so water enters inside the cell so in this case you have uh, the cell swelling up okay so here a hypertonic solution will be distilled water okay so here turgor pressure is maximum and this is known as a turgid cell so example of hypertonic solution will be a salt water example of isotonic will be tap water and example of hypotonic will be distilled water so this is a plasmolyzed cell this is flaccid cell and this is your turgid cell clear yes yes flaccid is normal so this is it now clear okay so based on this you have some condition let's see so first yes this is understood this is isotonic hypotonic and hypertonic so here in hypertonic the cell so this is your hypertonic solution so this is your turgid okay so it is like this so this is a flaccid cell meaning it is placed in isotonic condition so plasmolyzed cell okay so plasmolyzed cell is hypotonic right so plasmolyzed cell shrinks away so water moves out so this is how your cell is so here what happens your cell shrinks so here your cell swells done yes everyone no distilled water is not good for drinking but if you drink you won't die but it has less of ion content they don't prefer drinking distilled water all right yes okay so now comes the most interesting thing yes this i have explained osmotic pressure so you have water and you have solution when water moves this is your osmotic pressure right so this i hope everyone has understood so moving further dpd so what is the formula for dpd so dpd is equal to dpd is diffusion pressure deficit the formula is osmotic pressure minus your turgor pressure so this is the formula for dpd so just like water potential is equal to solute potential plus pressure potential so dpd is equal to osmotic pressure minus your turgor pressure okay yes so in the last case yes it moves right so this is what so water level reduces because water is moving across okay yes okay so now dpd is equal to osmotic pressure minus turgor pressure so here dpd is diffusion pressure deficit osmotic pressure turgor pressure so our turgor pressure is also known as wall pressure so it can be dpd is equal to op minus wall pressure this is not water potential this is wall pressure okay yes so this is also another formula please don't get confused all right yes incipient plasmolysis okay so don't get confused now we are solving questions from the point of 
your uh, uh, problem so incipient plasmolysis is not needed so that is the reverse plasmolysis so how does plasmolysis condition reverse when you place it in a hypertonic medium okay so this condition has to reverse so this is plasmolysed right so how do you reverse it when water moves inside so when you place it in a hypotonic condition all right sorry when you play yes when you place it in a hypotonic condition okay yes here i have drawn more no i have written same water what is your doubt antonia b so is this clear now yes everyone oh so now this is one formula now the condition for your flaccid cell so what is a flaccid cell when it is placed in your isotonic condition right so if a flaccid cell is placed in pure water okay if suppose your tap water so turgor pressure is zero of course in a flaccid cell there is no movement of water so your turgor pressure is zero thus for a flaccid cell dpd is equal to Uh, osmotic pressure minus turgor pressure so turgor pressure is zero thus for a flaccid cell dpd is equal to only osmotic pressure so now clear yes where antonia b i have i don't understand your doubt yes of course here hypotonic is less ions and more water right so hypertonic medium so water moves inside yes what is your doubt here yes in the last part that is turgid cell okay i don't know if you're talking about this one or that one in a turgid cell water moves inside so your cell swells so do you have a doubt are you saying the correct answer yes which way it is i don't understand so please type your doubt fully not this slide so if you type in bits and pieces by the time you complete it so people are texting in between so i do not have continuity this one this is what you're talking okay you're clear fine okay so i hope you have understood if you have any doubt so please ask me to repeat i will repeat it from first okay Yes I hope this is what you are talking about and I hope you have understood okay so moving further so thus for a flaccid cell dpd is equal to op so this is your flaccid cell there is no net movement of water okay so here because your turgor pressure is zero dpd is equal to osmotic potential thus if you get a question so in a flaccid cell if osmotic potential increases then what will be your dpd so if osmotic potential uh, increases then your dpd will also increase because in the flaccid cell dpd is equal to osmotic pressure okay yes okay all right antonia p okay so now you have understood fine so this condition for a flaccid cell is clear okay so now the next condition for a turgid cell so turgid cell is when it is placed in your hypotonic sorry hypotonic condition okay so cell becomes turgid okay so when the cell membrane expands and when you have more amount of your turgor pressure okay so here dpd is zero so in your turgid cell dpd is zero why cell becomes more turgid so here your osmotic potential and your pressure potential is the same so in case of your flaccid cell turgor pressure is zero but in case of your turgid cell osmotic pressure is equal to turgor pressure that dpd is zero yes okay is this clear yes so this is the condition for your turgid cell the next one so that's no water enters inside because it is already filled with water so that is the confusion okay so that is the final part so in a turgid cell dpd is zero 
Now what happens in a plasmolyte cell? In your plasmolyte cell, DPD is maximum because here your turgor pressure is negative. So turgor pressure is negative because it shrinks away from the cell wall, right? So since it shrinks away, so your turgor pressure is a negative value. So DPD is nothing but osmotic pressure minus turgor pressure. Suppose if the osmotic pressure is 5, okay, and the turgor pressure is minus 5. So DPD will be maximum, right? So DPD will be maximum in case of a terg plasmolite cell and DPD will be equal to 0 for a turgid cell and DPD will be equal to osmotic pressure for a flaccid cell. Done? Yes? Okay. So once again, whatever we have discussed, let's write it down. So for a flaccid cell, so now you know what is a flaccid cell. For a flaccid cell, DPD is equal to osmotic pressure because here turgor pressure is 0. Then what about your turgid pressure? Sorry, turgid cell, your DPD is 0 because in your turgid cell, your osmotic pressure is equal to turgor pressure. Okay? Yes? Fine. Now, finally, your plasmolyzed cell. So, in your plasmolyzed cell, DPD is maximum because here turgor pressure is negative. Yes, to some extent, turgor pressure, wall pressure, they are always positive. If it is negative, which means there is no pressure on the walls. Okay, so these are the three conditions. Now, remember this. When a solution and a pure water is subjected to the same pressure, then DPD is equal to OP. So this is your isotonic condition. When your solution, that is a solute mixed with a solvent, as well as a pure water is subjected to the same pressure, then DPD is equal to OP. Okay? Yes? No, this is not confusing. This makes things simpler. So now when you solve question, it will be easy for you. Okay, Shimpi? Yes? Now, the next case, when water enters inside a cell by osmosis, okay, so turgor pressure develops, okay. So, cell membrane expands, thus osmotic potential decreases, but your turgor potential increases. So, here in turgid cell also, water enters inside your cell, okay. So, here as the water enters inside, your osmotic potential and your turgor potential become almost same. So, in your turgid cell, in, in your turgid cell, you are placing the cell in a hypotonic condition. Suppose, if you have a condition like this, so where you have pure water and where you have solution, so water moves like this. So, in this condition, your turgor pressure keeps on increasing, but your osmotic pressure keeps on reducing because the solute molecules decrease here. Because more water is coming, the turgor pressure increases, but osmotic pressure decreases because water molecules get mixed with the solute. Alright? Yes? Okay? So, did you understand this? Yes, Vishal, I will get back to you after class. Okay, so is this clear with everyone? So are the concepts clear? So this is the basic concept which you have to remember for this chapter. Clear everyone? No doubt? Yes? Everyone is perfectly clear? So now you understood where, what, what will be the value of turgor pressure, osmotic potential. Have you noted it down? Yes? Okay. So, let's see how many questions we can solve. So, question 1. Two main components that determine the water potential are pressure gradient minus water potential, solute potential and pressure potential, evaporation of water from stem and leaf, the overall movement of solute. So, hi Veera Shanmugam, how are you? Thank you for joining my lecture. So, I have a mentee this evening at 6.30. So, please join me for the same. 
I hope you got access to your mock test series. Yes, I told them to give. Yes. Yes, Keshav, it is absolutely right. So, water potential is equal to solute potential plus pressure potential. Right? Clear? Yes, all of you are right. So, question number 2. The water potential of pure water decreases on the addition of a solute or solvent, both A and B, none of these. You got OK Vira Shanmugam, that's nice. So, start solving. Solvent, so solvent is water. Solute is for example, your sugar molecule. So, maximum water potential is zero of a pure water. If this decreases means your water potential is becoming negative. So, your water potential becomes negative on the addition of your solute. Okay, so this is option A. Fine. So, question 3. Solute particles tend to dash the diffusion pressure of water. Increase, decrease, remain constant, become less than 0. Yes, question number 3. Yes, so solute molecules or solute particles in a solution tend to dash the diffusion pressure of water. Okay, alright Vishar, so please take your time but do it properly, okay, yes. So solute molecules tend to dash the diffusion pressure of water. Yes, so question number 3 remains constant. So, solute particles tend to decrease the diffusion pressure of water. So, if in a solution, I have solute plus my water that is solvent and if I have pure water here, so water moves inside this. But I have my osmotic pressure that is created by my solute to stop this flow of water, right? So, that's why solute particles tend to decrease the diffusion pressure of water. Yes? No. So, they are asking the diffusion pressure. So, the diffusion, suppose of its, suppose if its osmotic, no, osmotic pressure is created by the solute. So, solute particles increase the osmotic pressure but decrease the diffusion pressure of water. It is only this small correlation. So, here your answer is B. Okay? Yes. So, question 4. So, water tends to move into a cell that has high turgor pressure, high positive water pressure, more negative water potential or low turgor pressure. So, take your time. Water tends to move inside a cell that has high turgor pressure, High positive water potential, more negative water potential or low turgor pressure. Yes, question number C. C, sorry, question number 4. I'm sorry. So, when a cell has high turgor pressure, it means it is a turgid cell. Right, so turgid cell is not going to have any movement of water. So, water will not move inside a turgid cell because already it is filled, right? It is not high turgor pressure. High water potential, meaning water potential is already its maximum. It is pure water. It will not move here also. Here, water potential is negative, meaning it is a solution. So, thus water tends to move into a cell that has more negative water potential. Okay, yes, no, it does not have more weightage, it has only 1% weightage, but since you people found it difficult, I thought I will help you out, that's all. No, not even low turgor potential, more negative potential because this indicates it's a solution. So, water moves into a solution, right? Yes? Clear? Okay, fine. So, question number 5, yes, this is your favorite question. A cell A has water potential of minus 3 bars and B has a water potential of minus 8 bars. The movement of water potential will be cell A to B, B to A, data insufficient, water cannot move in the negative value of water potential. Yes, what is your question number 5? 
so in i have two cells this is cell a this is cell b so here it is minus 3 bars so here it is minus 8 bars yes Yes, okay. So, here wherever water potential is greater, that means there is less water there. So, here, okay. So, water potential is negative means it is in solution. So, out of these two, which is greater? So, this is greater, right? So, on your negative axis, minus 8, minus 3. So, this is greater and this, hey, 9. So, it is like this. So, water moves from cell A to cell B. So, this has less value of water potential, meaning this has more of water, less of solute compared to your cell B. So, this is how you write on your negative scale, right? So, it is so and so till 0. From here, if you go, it is 1, 2, 3 and 8. Right. So, in this case, this is higher value. Minus 3 bars is higher value. So, which means if this has a higher value, then here the water potential is comparatively higher. It is nearing 0. So, here I have more water molecules compared to here. So, it moves from cell A to cell B. Yes, Keshav, you are right. It is option A. Yes, minus 8 is less and minus 3 is more. So, if water potential, so which is close to 0? Minus 3. So, which means it has more water, this has less water. So, it will move from A to B, right? Yes. So, all of you have went wrong, have gone wrong in just one single statement. So, please be cautious. So, here the answer is cell A to cell B. Question number 6. The osmotic expansion of a cell kept in water is chiefly regulated by mitochondria, vacuoles, plastids, ribosome. So, this is a theoretical question. So, what is the answer? The osmotic expansion of a cell. So, this is vacuoles because vacuoles contain sap, meaning it contains a solution. Right? So, this is vacuoles. I hope it's clear. This is not a tricky one. Yes. Question 7. Yes. The values of osmotic potential, so this is my osmotic potential and my pressure potential of cells A, B, C, D are given below. Identify the option which shows the correct sequence of the path of movement of water. Yes, please solve this for me. So, please solve this for me. So, I have to find water potential. So, water potential is equal to osmotic pressure or solute pressure minus pre, uh, plus pressure potential, right? Yes. Come on quick, I give you time to solve. Yes, yes, absolutely right. It moves from B to D, D to A, A to C. Yes, what is the formula? Yes, what is the formula? So, here the water potential is, what is the value? Minus 0.5. So, here it is minus 0.3. So, here it is minus 0.4 if I am right. No, minus 0.6. So, here it is minus 0.4. So, from where to where it moves? So, this is nearing 0. So, from B to D, D to A and A to C. Right. Absolutely right you guys are very good. So, you have understood the logic behind. Yes, question number 8. What will be the direction of flow of water when a plant cell is placed in a hypotonic solution? Water will flow in both the directions. Water will flow out of the cell. Water will flow into the cell. No flow of water in any direction. 
yes that also you can say but they have asked you to find the water potential right so they have given you osmotic potential and pressure potential yes you can uh, so i have calculated the water potential here you can calculate the dpd also okay fine so dpd also it's the same formula right okay fine so don't confuse with my logic dpd also the same formula osmotic pressure minus delta pressure or wall pressure yes right yes question 8 what is the answer so water will flow into the cell because hypotonic means more less of ions and more of water yes perfect so question 9 so when external solution is more it is dash it is called dash solution so fill in the blanks with hypotonic uh, sorry with appropriate pair from the options given below when the external solution is more dilute it is called dash solution so from the options give me the answer yes yes quick what is the answer perfect so that is option d when the external solution is more concentrated it is hypertonic because hypertonic means more ions and less of water yes absolutely right so question number 10 so dash occurs when the water moves out of the cell and dash of a plant cell shrinks away from the plant from the cell wall yes yes what is the answer for question number 10 okay so there you use water potential formula you do not use dpd formula okay yes no it is b because they have given you pressure potential and your osmotic potential so osmotic potential and solute potential are the same so here water potential is what we calculate unless and until dpd is not mentioned in the question we do not go to dpd okay anthony yes this is option d so plasmolysis occurs when the water moves out of the cell and cell membrane of a plant cell shrinks away from the cell wall yes absolutely right so i have five more questions which will be a homework if you do not understand you will ask me in my online class okay in any of the class that's fine but please solve the remaining five questions so i will stop with this so please join me for my menti quiz at 6:30 pm so until then this is me wishing you more and more i hope you found the essence of the session and i hope you understood a important take home concept and you'll be very clear in this chapter yes this this session help you so thank you so much for joining my session so this is me wishing you most and more please take care and join me for my 6:30 session so until then bye